Hello everybody and welcome back to a new showcase. Today's showcase is a very well known mod called Alex's Mobs, which adds a range of new creatures, some from fantasy, some from the real world. This will be split into three parts with 28 mobs in each video, otherwise you're stuck watching an hour's video listening to my voice and I don't think you want to hear me talk for that long. So don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get into the good stuff. The Grizzly Bear was one of the first of a few who were released when the mod came out, and have been through a few changes since then. You can find these bears in forest biomes, and occasionally with their cubs, but don't get too close as they will go for you. If you keep them in your sights for a while, they can occasionally drop bear fur, which can be used to create a falconry glove, and a frontiersman cap in a crafting table, and potions of knockback resistance in a brewing stand when brewed with strength potions. You can also tame a bear by first dropping honey in front of them to make them docile. After they've eaten this, you can drop some salmon in front of them, and when given enough, they will be tamed. You can now use them as mounts and will deal some serious damage to enemies if they start attacking you. If your bear becomes encumbered due to snowy weather, you can use a shovel to remove any snow on it. This can also be removed with water, rain, or if the bear enters a hot biome. The Roadrunner was also one of the first mobs added into Alex's mobs and can be found in the deserts and the badlands. Be warned as it is a very quick animal, they will attack rattlesnakes if they are close to them. They can be bred with maggots, which we will go on to later in the video. If you decide to kill the Roadrunner, they can drop their feathers called Roadrunner Feather, which can be used to craft a falconry hood and Roadrunner Boots. Roadrunner Boots slightly increase your speed when you walk or run on sand. There are a couple of little easter eggs with these little creatures and that if you name them Meep, you'll get a different skin, which may look familiar to you. Another thing is that you can't kill the Roadrunner with an anvil. We're now getting onto the first nether mob on this list, the Bone Serpent, which can be found in the lava lakes in the nether. Be careful when trying to travel past these lava lakes as the Bone Serpent is completely hostile and will jump out and try to flatten you by landing on you. The Bone Serpent will also attack any wither skeletons it sees, so at least you're not its only target. If you do manage to kill these creatures, it can drop one of its teeth called Bone Serpent Tooth. This can be used in a brewing stand with some lava bottles, which you can easily get from just interacting with lava when holding a bottle, to get yourself a potion of lava vision, which lets you see under lava. The next mob is the gazelle, which can be found roaming in herds in the savannah. These peaceful mobs won't attack you, but will instead run away if any of its pack is attacked. But they are quick, making it difficult for their attacker to hit them again. If you do manage to kill a gazelle, they can drop a gazelle horn, which can be used in a brewing stand with potions of swiftness to gain a better potion of swiftness that gives you plus 60% speed for 1 minute and 50 seconds. You can also breed gazelles with acacia blossom. Next we have the Crocodile, which is another mob which has been changed a lot throughout its life on Alex's mobs. These beasts can be found rarely in rivers and swamps and is completely hostile. If you do come across a Crocodile, make sure you are prepared to fight it if it spots you, as it will lunge at you and grab you. When it does, it will do its best to pull you underwater while spinning, making it hard for you to escape its grasp. However, if you're not prepared to take this on, you can block its lunge with your shield, which will temporarily stun it, giving you enough time to escape. You can actually breed Crocodiles with rotten flesh, and shortly after, they will go to land and lay some eggs. Make sure you don't on these as if they do get damaged in any way, the parents will become aggressive towards the attacker. When it hatches, the baby crocodile will imprint on the nearest player. If the player interacts with a crocodile, it can make it stay or bask. When the baby turns into an adult or when a crocodile dies, it can drop some crocodile scoots, which can be used to create a crocodile chest plate, which gives you plus 7 armor, plus 1 armor toughness and plus 1 swim speed. Next up is the fly, which are small insects found flying all over the world. They can be found, however, attacking zombies and biting them, dealing small amount of damage. They won't attack you though, as they are peaceful. If you decide to breed them, you can do so by giving them rotten flesh, and will have a chance to drop maggots. They can also drop these if you kill them. These are used to breed roadrunners and capuchin monkeys, but if you're out of food, you can eat them. Be wary when building a nether portal, as if the fly enters the nether, they will turn into a crimson mosquito, which are annoying and hostile creatures, which we will go on to later in the video. Next we have the Hummingbird, which is a peaceful mob found in the jungles, plains, flower forests and sunflower biomes. These tiny birds are very quick, but you can get them to get close to you if you breed them and can do so with flowers. Another cool thing you can do to keep hummingbirds close is to build a hummingbird feeder, which also boosts their pollination in a small area around the feeder. The orca is the first on this list which spawns in the oceans, but only in cold oceans and in packs. They are neutral mobs and will give you a buff called Orca's Might, which will increase your attack speed. Don't make them angry though, because if you do, they will attack and so will its whole pack. They will attack some creatures such as polar bears, fish, whales and hostile enemies also, so being close to these in the ocean may just save you from many drowned. The Sunbird is next on our list, and this magnificent bird can be found soaring above the skies of the mountains. It is completely passive, and when you get close to it, you can be granted the Sunbird's blessing, which means you can calmly float up and down at an accelerated speed, making it much easier to control when wearing an elytra. You don't want to mess with the Sunbird, however, because when you do, it will give you the Sunbird's curse, which will slam you straight to the ground. This bird is great to stay by at night, however, as it will burn any sun-sensitive mobs like zombies and skeletons. Another thing is that the Sunbird is immune to flame, heat, or lava damage, considering it's made out of fire. 
Our next mob is the gorilla. This can be found in groups in the jungles and each group has a leader, which is slightly different to the other gorillas. These are the silverback gorillas and these are two to three times more powerful than the average gorilla. So make sure not to mess with these guys. They are neutral creatures, but will attack if provoked and this whole herd will be onto you too. Occasionally, you will see baby gorillas ride in the backs of other adult gorillas, which is quite a nice detail. If you gain a banana, which has a rare chance to drop from jungle leaves, you can give some to the gorilla and will become your friend. You can make it sit or wonder and will come to protect you from any threat. A couple of easter eggs is that when you name a gorilla Harambe, a halo will pop above the gorilla's head in remembrance of Harambe. If you name the gorilla DK, their skin will change into Donkey Kong from Super Mario. If you change their name into Funky Kong, it will change the gorilla into Funky Kong, which is also from Super Mario the Crimson Mosquito. Now you can probably remember me talking how this came to be, and it can spawn if a fly enters the nether. However, this can also just naturally spawn in the Crimson Forests. The hostile creature will latch onto you, and any animal, and will suck the blood from you. To make it even worse, it will spit it back at you, dealing damage. If you manage to kill this while its blood sack is full, it can drop a blood sack. It also has a chance to drop a Crimson Mosquito proboscis. You can use both of these in crafting to create a blood sprayer, which is a weapon that shoots blood and deals damage. If you run out of blood, you can restock it with more blood sacks. If the Crimson mosquito sucks blood from Among Us, covered in warped fungi, the crimson mosquito will transform into the warped Moscow, but we'll go on to that in the next video. Next up is the rattlesnake, which can be found slithering on the floor of the deserts and badlands. You may hear it before you see it, as a rattle sound will come from it, warning the potential attacker not to aggravate it. If you do get close enough, it will attack its enemy and poison it for a couple of seconds. If the rattlesnake comes across a roadrunner, it will lash out at it and both will get into a fight. You can actually breed the rattlesnake if you feed it any type of meat. If you kill the rattlesnake, it does have a chance to drop the rattlesnake rattle. This can be used to create a maraca, which we will go into more detail later in the video. Or it can be brewed with some potions of poison to create poisonous essence. This can then be used in a brewing stand with a cave centipede leg to create a potion of poison resistance, which gives you resistance to poison. Next on the list is the Endergrade, which is the first of the mobs which spawn in the end. You can find these guys floating around in the chorus forests of the end. You're not able to tame these guys, but you can ride them like you would a pig. All you need is a saddle and a chorus fruit on a stick, and you'll get yourself something to get around the end with. You can create a chorus fruit on a stick with a fishing rod and a chorus fruit. I will warn you that I said you can ride them like a pig for a reason. That's because they aren't very quick, but hey, it's a cool way to get around the end. If you give an Endergrade a chorus fruit, you can breathe them, but this can also be used to lure the Endergrades down from when they're quite high up. Next up we have the hammerhead shark which can be found swimming in the warmer waters of the ocean. These hammerhead sharks are neutral but will attack anything if it gets below half health. So next time you go swimming, make sure you're full health otherwise you could become the hammerhead's next meal. They do however just eat tropical fish and squid. You know when they're about to attack as they start to circle its target. When it attacks it can occasionally drop one of its teeth called shark tooth. This can be used with some other materials to create six shark tooth arrows and when fired from a bow or a crossbow they will do extra damage and travel much faster and better underwater than normal arrows. Next up is another aquatic creature called the lobster. These little guys can be found swimming around underwater in beach biomes. They are pretty much peaceful as when you do attack them, they will warn you by attacking you once and then scurrying away. If you kill a lobster, they can drop lobster tails, which can be cooked and eaten. You can also bucket the lobster up like you would a fish. You may come across a range of different colours, however, you may never see a black or white one as they are extremely rare, rarer than the blue axitol even. Next we have the Komodo dragon which can be found roaming around the sparse jungles. Make sure to keep your distance with these lizards as they will attack on sight. They will even attack their own and stand on their hind legs for dominance. When they do attack they will poison the target with its bite. However, there is a way to tame these aggressive animals and you can do so by feeding it stacks of rotten flesh. And I'm not even exaggerating, but at least it gives rotten flesh a use I guess. You can ride a Komodo dragon when a saddle is placed on it and it is surprisingly quick. You can also make it stay, follow and wander. Once in a while the Komodo dragon may drop its saliva called Komodo dragon spit, which can be made into a slime ball, brewed with potions of poison resistance to increase its duration, or a Komodo dragon spit bottle. This spit bottle can be brewed with a cave centipede leg to create a potion of poison resistance. Next we have the Capuchin Monkey. These little guys can be found in jungle biomes and are completely peaceful. You are able to tame a Capuchin Monkey if you feed them enough bananas and can be made to sit, wander or follow. They are also very good defenders of their owners as they can attack with both a melee and ranged attack. If you shift right click a tamed monkey you can put them on your back where they will continue to protect you by throwing stones at enemies. In jungle temples you can rarely find an ancient dart which can be given to Capuchin Monkeys where they will use it as a ranged weapon which pierces enemies. If your small friend gets injured you can feed them eggs but if you find a mate for them you can feed them both maggots and they will breed. When feeding a monkey a banana, they can have a chance to drop a banana peel, which can then be used to create a small dish called sopa de maco. 
Deep in the cave spine, you may come across a creepy looking creature called the cave centipede. By their looks, you can tell that they're not going to be friendly, so will attack you. And even though it's slow, it will deal some serious damage as well as poison you. If you do manage to kill this creature, it can drop a cave centipede leg, which can be used in a brewing stand with Komodo dragon spit bottles or poisonous essence to create potions of poison resistance. You can also use this to create cave centipede leggings, which will enable you to climb walls. Next up is a neutral mob called the Warped Toad, and is one of the first mobs to be added to Alex's mobs since its release. This giant creature can be found roaming in the Warped Forest in the Nether, and will attack you if you are hostile towards it. If you do decide you wanted to kill it, it can drop some Shroom Light, but this may not be the best idea as they are very useful when coming to killing Crimson Mosquitoes and Flies. They can be tamed when you give them enough Crimson Mosquito Lava, which can be crafted with Crimson Mosquito Proboscis and Maggots. They can be made to follow, sit and wander, but they will also protect their owner from any attackers. If your friend does get injured, you can easily heal it with maggots, and if you find it a mate, you can breathe them with Crimson Mosquito Lava. A cool little easter egg is that if you name your Warped Toad Pepe, it will turn the Warped Toad into Pepe the Frog. Next up, we have the moose, which can be found roaming in the snowy tundras or tigers with their young. These giant mammals are not to be messed with because even though they are neutral, they can still do some damage if you or any animal provokes them. They will occasionally be seen jostling with other moose. Every 7 to 10 days, you may see that the moose will drop an antler, and with these, you can create an antlerless headdress, which can be equipped to give the wearer extra knockback when they attack. You can breed moose with dandelions. Moose can also gather snow on their back due to them roaming in the snowy biomes. So, like you can with a bear, a shovel, water, rain or a hot biome can get this off of them. The next mob we have is the Mimic Cube, which was added in the second update of Alex's mobs. These slime-like creatures can be found in the end cities found in the end and are hostile towards the player. Be careful when attempting to fight back the Mimic Cube, as they can do so with the exact same weapon you have. That's right, the Mimic Cube mimics everything you have, including weapons such as a sword, bow, and trident, your helmet, anything in your offhand including shields, and enchantments too. If you do manage to kill a Mimic Cube, they have a chance to drop Mimic Cream, which can be used to create a Hemolith Blaster, but we'll go on to that in another video. This can also be used like soap to copy any tool, weapon, or armor piece, including the enchantments. However, this copied weapon will be almost at no durability, so make sure you repair it before using it. Next up is the raccoon, and these small guys can be found in plains and forests. They are neutral mobs, however, they will beg for food if they see you holding some. They can easily be recognized at night by their eyes as they glow in the dark. Make sure you close your doors to your base where there are chests, as these pests can actually steal food from them. Although, if you feed them an egg, they will take and wash it in a nearby water source. Do this enough times and they will be tamed. You can now make the raccoon sit, wander, or follow. They can also be bred with some bread. To give your raccoon a bit of fashion, you can interact with the raccoon with some carpet to give it a bandana. But if you feel like you don't want it, you can remove it with shears. Occasionally, the raccoon can steal certain items from villagers and will run away, but you can make them drop it if you hit them. If you decide to kill a raccoon, they can drop a raccoon tail, which can be crafted into a frontiers man's cap, which will give the wearer extra speed when sneaking. A cool little easter egg is that if you name a raccoon Rigby, it can change their skin into Rigby from regular show. The next mob in this video is the Blobfish, and is a peaceful mob found in the deepest oceans of your world. Now, you may come across this fish when it's pretty much a pink pile of sludge, and that is because unless it's in more than 10 blocks of water pressure, it will look like that. Although, once it is below 10 blocks of water pressure, it becomes more compressed and shows in a greyish colour. If you kill a Blobfish, it can drop a Blobfish, and this can be used to create fish oil. Where you use this item, it will let you levitate in water, and when it's raining for a limited amount of time. They can be bucketed up like any other fish, and they can also be given a slime ball to give it a chance to survive survive it when it's on land. However, there isn't much use to doing this considering you're not able to tame or breed it in any way. Next up is the seal, and is one of the first mobs added in the third update. These aquatic creatures can be found lying on the sandy beaches or icebergs of the world in groups. They can usually be found sleeping and basking on them, but they can also be seen swimming in the ocean. They are peaceful mobs, although they will scurry and swim away if one of their group members is attacked by an orca, their predator. You can also feed a seal three fish when they are laying on land. The seal will then go into the sea and look on the seabed to trade to the player. Most of the time, the seal can just give you junk, but occasionally it will give you more rarer items. You can also breed seals with lobster tails. Next up, we have the cockroach, which can be found underground. These little critters will run away from any type of light, including torches. If you come across a cockroach, you may find a cockroach uthika around, which are small eggs which the cockroaches lay. You can make the cockroaches more comfortable if you feed them bread or sugar, but make sure not to drop the wrong food as they will grab it and eat it. You can also give a cockroach a maraca, 
and when doing so, the cockroach and any cockroach nearby will start to dance and play Mexican type music. If you kill the dancing cockroach with a sombrero hat, you do have a very small chance to get the sombrero hat it's wearing. Sometimes if the cockroach is injured, its head may disappear, but it will carry on as usual like it still has it. If you want to breed cockroaches, you can give them sugar. If you decide to kill a cockroach, they can drop a wing fragment, which can then be crafted into a cockroach wing. This can then be brewed with some awkward potions to create potions of bug pheromones. This useful potion will make it so that you become undetected by other arthropods, but it won't make you invisible. In earlier versions of the mod, you used to be able to give the cockroach a rainbow type skin. However, this has now been fixed due to being able to done with the rainbow jelly, but we'll get onto that in another video. The next mob we have is the shoebill, which can be found in swamps. These birds are completely passive, but will fly away if they are attacked. They can be seen looking for food, but if you feed them crocodile eggs, they can have a better chance to catch fish. However, if you feed them terrapin eggs, their luck will increase for their catches, meaning better items for you. These birds will also attack any baby turtles and any baby crocodiles too. Next up we have the elephant, which is the first of two mobs which were added in the fourth update of Alex's mobs. They can be found in herds roaming in the savannas. There are three types of elephants, calves, tusked and non-tusked. They are neutral mobs but don't get too comfortable as they will attack you if they are provoked. The tusked elephants being much stronger than the other two types. The elephants can attack in a range of different ways, such as charging and stomping. You can sometimes see the elephants close to some trees where they will try to find acacia blossoms, which rarely drop from the leaves. If you manage to get hold of one, you can tame an elephant. However, you cannot tame an adult tusked elephant. You can only get a tamed tusked elephant from when it's a calf. When they are tamed, you can ride one and also attach some chests to them to give it an inventory. You can also use some carpet on the elephants to give it some nice decoration and you can also remove this with shears. If you feed the tusked elephant some wheat whilst riding them, they will charge and their attack speed increases which will do a large amount of damage. Be careful though as you will need to give time before the elephant can be fed wheat again. You can breed two tamed elephants with acacia blossom. Occasionally you will find a wandering trader riding an elephant when you're in a hot biome and when you do, make sure to sneak right click the elephant as it can hold some loot which you can take. The last mob we'll go through today is the Soul Vulture, which can be found flying in the Soul Sand Valleys of the Nether. Be careful when trotting around these creatures as they will attack you and steal your health. They can steal up to five times your maximum health, so make sure to take care of these before it's too late. If you do manage to kill the Soul Vulture, they have a chance to drop a Soul Heart, which can be brewed with some awkward potions to create potions of Soul Steel. This effect gives you Life Steel, so that when you hit an enemy, you'll gain a portion of your life back from them. These Soul Vultures will also attack Piglins if they spot them, although they will be hunted by Bone Serpents if they get too close to them. So that's all the mobs today, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If I missed anything with these mobs, please let us know in the comments down below. I will be doing another part of this mod very soon, so stay tuned. If you guys want to suggest me a mod, please leave a comment down below or join my Discord server and suggest one to me there, and I'll catch you all in the next video.